How is everybody doing today? Welcome to the inaugural episode of Year Round Tree. I am your host, Nikki P, here with my lovely wife and co-host, Lizzie. What's up, you guys? Happy holidays. So, uh, I'm sitting here in front of the fireplace with my beautiful wife on the 2nd of December. Is that what this is? I believe so, yeah. Okay. In the year 2019... Um, I have a cognac and eggnog because it just seems like the thing to do when you're trying to feel festive. Is is that what's in there? No, no, I'm drinking both. Oh, okay. I don't like anything in my eggnog. I just like the sweet sugary goodness. you just double fisting? That's generally how I live my life is double fisting, Liz. (laughs) So, we're both here in our Christmas sweaters. Yes, I really like what you've got going on there. Is that is that Mrs. Claus as a as a mud flap girl? It is absolutely Mrs. Claus as a mud flap That's girl. That's impressive. Um, I really like yours, where it's a fuzzy snowman, but each of the snowballs is a pom pom over your respective bosoms. <laughs> I thought it was fun. <laughs> it's it's something. It draws attention to well, your chest. I mean, you know. You know, not to say that your chest doesn't draw enough attention, but... Might as well. So, we started this podcast because we're both insane and obsessed with Christmas, and the name Year Round Tree is not not exactly a euphemism for us. We literally have a tree up year round. We do. We change what's on it for the seasons and yeah, the, yeah. the holidays. There's generally one holiday a month that we can kind of rearrange it for. Yep. But we do have seasonal skirts. We do. We, we go all and out. I think part of the idea is that uh, maybe Christmas was different for us when we were kids. This is true. Um, Irma, you know, we talk about it with her. I don't think she realizes how weird it's going to be. She's a homeschool kid, so luckily she'll never have to probably deal with too many kids asking her <laughs> why you have a Christmas tree up. What the heck is that about? Um... But I have actually, definitely, in the course of preparing for some Christmas programming that I'm going to be doing this summer, or this, uh, not summer, this uh, winter, Mm -hmm. with my partner Don and Pelcon and co, you know, we've been talking about, I think Christmas is definitely something very different for his generation than it was for ours. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, And there's something magical about the Christmas spirit to us. Fuck it. We're going to keep it around all year. Yeah, absolutely. And so I plan on this podcast being a weekly affair, but we're going to talk about Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and Christmas-themed things like movies and music and whatnot. And, you know, maybe Christmas year-round isn't your thing. But, man, you could really jam in 52 episodes in the holiday season to make you feel really extra festive. Yeah, there you go. You can binge that stuff man. yeah binge it binge 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 like i'm gonna do on this eggnog <laughs> it only comes around once a year man it's only right you need to bring it out in july too i know and that'd be great summer nog <laughs> yeah anyway so we thought it'd be fun to start out our inaugural episode of year round tree by talking about one of the, my favorite and most ridiculous oh christmas movies it is something I want to. I just want to do a special episode of our other podcast, Sounds Like Liberty, on specifically all of the economics in this. Because there's a lot in this, and I didn't really realize it yeah. until I'm watching it. But here, we're going to talk specifically about Christmassy kind of stuff. Yeah. So, without further ado, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Yeah. Oh, it's all Muppets. The movie came out as a TV special in 1977 based on a book... By Russell Hodgen or Hagen, something like that. Okay, fair enough. Um, music by Paul Williams. Yeah. Now, I looked up who Paul Williams is because the name is immediately familiar to me and I don't know why. And as it turns out, Paul Williams is the guy who wrote the theme song to Love Boat. Which is amazing. In and of itself. But did he stop there? Uh, no, I'm assuming. Absolutely not. He is the man behind the most, like, the only song that I know is capable of automatically bringing me to tears. Oh. Which is Rainbow Connection. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Now, did he stop there? 
No? No. Good oh, Lord. My goodness. This man was a phenom in his day. He's also responsible for penning the three or three dog night classic, old fashioned love song. Oh, that's a good song. It is. He also wrote "Rainy Days and Mondays," and we've only just begun for the Carpenters. Good Lord, talk about bringing you to tears. He was a hit machine of sappy, sappy yeah, music. Yeah, really. Sa- well, and that's how I knew him as the the guy who wrote all the sappy songs for um, Muppet Christmas Carol. Uh, just right in the fields, man. We're not there at that one yet. <laughs> so let's let's start with stay with here with Emma Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Okay, so for those who don't know, this might as well just be considered West Virginia the musical, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I'm not actually from West Virginia, but me neither. I've driven through it. Yeah, it feels like an appropriate thing to say. I've actually driven through it in Christmas, and it's yeah. gorgeous. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. It, it's kind of depressing, though. <laughs> okay. At least from the highway, I'll tell you that much. I know that I have friends that have lived in West Virginia mm-hmm. and seem to vouch for what I'm, I'm saying here. There you go. Okay. So, it, the basic premise is you have very, very poor people in the, the 70s. Um, it, it's centered around Emmett Otter and his mom's family. Dad died... It's some kind of undisclosed time before this, and Dad was a snake oil salesman. <laughs> Just very interesting to start with, really. Yeah. But, you know, Dad was a man who would chase his dream to try and do anything he could for his family, is the mm-hmm. premise. It's, it's a good place to start for a Christmas movie. Sure. Okay. So, the first thing we kind of see is them dr- floating down the river, talking about... A song about Grandma Otter. This song is hilarious. By okay, the way. and it's it's what it's about her bathing suit. It's about her bathing suit, which was like large enough to be a circus tent, and they made clothing from the, for the poor out of it. It's just it's so. I mean, I'm over sorry. the top. Any song about fat grandma is a so winner. So over the top. It's it's a winner in my book. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. And, like, you immediately are set in this world where, like, they're setting up a Christmas movie. Because you you got, like, the the happy poor people and then just the uppity, bitchy people with money. This is true. Yeah, they do kind of throw that at you right off the bat. Yeah, like, she's giving out, like, she's doing work for this fox lady. And she hands her stuff and, like, she, she complains about something. Right. And it's like, well, remind me when I feel like paying you next time. Like, bitch, it's going on Christmas and you're not going to pay her? <laughs> right. Like, who does that? Come on. Yeah. It's not... It's not kosher. That is not kosher at all. That's not yeah, cool. Yeah, seriously. And, like, they really make her look evil, too. I don't know what it is about foxes in those types of movies. They always I know, look right? evil. And she's wearing a fur stole and she's a fox. Figure that <sighs> out. Look. <laughs> Jim Henson didn't mess around. <laughs> If they were making a statement, they'd make a statement. <laughs> okay. So, next thing you know, you see this band kind of cruise through town. And they're, they're the, the River Bottom Boys or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you're, they're going to come back later a right. couple times. Very cheeky fellows, those. Yeah. I, the one thing, okay, I want to talk about something here. This is one of the, I think, probably the more interesting things to me. This movie had to be ridiculous to film. Sure. Okay. The whole, like, so much of this movie takes place on water. Which is interesting, yeah, because they're like, doing it's, puppets. They're not, and, and, and it's not fake water. Like, literally, they, they had to be, they had to design a set that was just all pools of water that you could, like, walk around. Right. To film, but keep all of the, like, keep the edges out of focus. Right. And all the puppets are in the water. Right, so somehow you have to operate puppets underwater. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's that's pretty. It's pretty amazing when you think of the logistics yeah, on that. I'm I'm pretty impressed by it because like it looks good. It's it looks oh, just yeah, like any absolutely. other any other you know Muppet movie. Um, Absolute practical effects. There's, there's no trickery there. It's so yeah. But anyway, so the whole whole movie centers around this idea. Mm-hmm. Of 
they're gonna both try and win a music contest to do something nice for the other one, both Emmett and his ma. For Christmas. Which gives us, as you called it, a Gift of the Magi. Yeah, Gift of the Magi setup. Explain what Gift of the Magi setup is. Uh, essentially, what happens is there's a couple, they're down on their luck, and they give up something that's very precious to them to buy a gift that's associated with the thing that is most precious to the other person, not knowing that the other person has, of course, given up that thing is there to like buy. A, is there a classic story? Like, what do they give up in the original gift? Uh, in the original story, he buys her a golden comb for her gorgeous flowing locks, and she sells her hair to buy him a chain for his pocket watch, which, of course, he sold to buy her the comb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's just say we're 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 setting everyone up for a lot of a lot of defeat. Right. The whopping fifty dollar prize money that right. is going to save them. Yeah. And really change their lives. That's that's an economics lesson right there. So <laughs> yeah. So what ends up happening is in order to do this, Ma decides she has to sell the tools that Emmett uses to go out and make money by mending fences and things like that. They're also, at the emotional angle, they're the last thing of their of his father's that they haven't sold to right. make ends meet. They've already sold everything else. Yeah. Now, Emmett, in an effort to win this contest, he's talked by his friends into starting a jug band. Okay? Right. So, mom can't get a dress without selling the tools, mm -hmm. so she can go and be look pretty in front of the people. Emmett's jug band needs him to drill a hole in the wash tub. That she uses to do laundry work. Yes. Which is how she makes money. Right. So he can make a wash, uh, wash tub base. Yep. Which is also foreshadowed by the fact that there was a song about Ain't No Hole in the Wash Tub <laughs> earlier in right. said film. <laughs> But regardless, they both decide that this year they want to do something special for one another. Right. And they go ahead and both of them get rid of the other's means to yeah. make money. To take that chance. They're making some bold moves, folks. Yeah. Will it pay off? It depends on Christmas movie. Of course it pays off. <laughs> I mean, you know. But not without throwing a lot of roadblocks in the way. Well, they do. Okay. So... There's a fun little moment I thought was fun. So when they go out and get the tree branch. Yeah. Aw. They don't cut down the whole tree because dad could never cut down a whole tree. He just cut off a branch and he go, Well, because I chose to only take this branch, it's going to be here in a hundred years. It's just very cute to see like a little puppet guy doing an impression of his dad. It is. It is freaking <laughs> hilarious. He's doing an impression of his dad. Oh, God. Okay. No, we talked about any, we talked about the Grandma Otter song. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The next song that they come up with is so classic, bluegrass. Oh yeah. And I love it. Yeah. it it's barbecue. Yeah. Oh good lord. And it's just. <laughs> it's about barbecue down it, it, home cooking. And well, it's it's just the quintessential. Like it literally reminds me of eat at Joe's from A Mighty Wind. <laughs> nice. I'm just imagining that, that, that classic. Yeah. Wow, what is it with about bluegrass people talking about restaurants? I like, don't know. I mean, food is a crappy thing. Crappy restaurants with good food. Part of Southern hospitality or something. I guess. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, in both cases, like they're doing these things that are literally going to make it so they can no longer function and live in society. Right, right. And what are we going to do if we don't win? Yeah. Like, each of their their respective crews are asking them. Yeah. And it, there's there's never a question in their mind. Right. Like We've we just, just got to. Yeah, there can be no plan B. In That's other words, uh, we already know that they're not going to win, either of them. They've already set that up. The <laughs> right. fact that they have to win means they can't win. <laughs> right. Or else it's not a Christmas miracle. Yes, we need Christmas miracles. Okay. The next thing that comes up is we've we've seen these river bottom boys a couple times, right? Right. And this is something I don't I don't know if it's something I think of from Christmas movies or just in general. Mm -hmm. But you have the main bully in any crew. Okay. Is almost never really a bully. He's just kind of snarky. No, he's just cool. Oh, okay. Because if you take note, it's always the beta guys that do all the actual bullying. Mm, interesting. Oh, I see. So he's just like. 
we're going to do this. And the guy's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Like, <laughs> if you take note, like the wolf guy that leads the Riverbend boys, whatever they are, River Bottom boys, does he ever say anything other than let's, then let's go, let's roll out? Yeah, no, not really. That's true. No, he only ever says, let's go do this thing. Yeah. And sometimes contrary to what his crew is trying to do. Yeah. They're just trying to be pricks to impress him. Right. Oh, I now, see. I want you to, and I want you to take note. Think of bullies, classic bullies in mm-hmm. movies and TV shows. The, the big one that comes to mind is uh, Boy Meets World. Okay. He wasn't much of a bully. Like, it's, no. there's yeah. more of a mystique that makes them a bully. Yeah. This is and, true. Like, and it's like the people around them trying to impress them that really do the bullying. Yeah. Like the whole alpha, it's the beta you got to worry about. The alpha is the one who's just going to be him and do what he does. The guy with something to prove. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting thing. because it's, it's interesting. It's the pricks hanging out with the guy. Like He <laughs> just seems pretty cool. Yeah. Which, if I had a band that sounded like Deep Purple, I'd be pretty cool too. I mean, right? Yeah, sure. <sighs> All right, so... Let's see here. We have... Um, they get to the actual contest, okay? Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of acts. The second act comes on, and what happens? Oh, they're, they're doing the uh, the song. Yeah, the second act comes on, and this dude was yokel with a banjo comes out and does the <laughs> song that they're going to do. Yeah. So now we have a last-minute sock change. They've got How are they going to get past this? Like, yeah. they, they've got to win. Yeah. And now, yeah, now they have to change up the entire thing of like they planned on doing, and they did all that rehearsing for nothing. Because they can't go and do the same song this other guy did. And it's, all, and it's salty because he did a crappy version of it. He did, he it's did. It's hilarious for the sake of the movie. But, yeah. But he did a crappy version of their song. So like, now they have a great version of it, but they can't do it because somebody else chose their material. Right. So they're out. They get a couple minutes to... like Throw something together. And they barely throw it together before they go, Hey, what the, heck, what the heck are you guys doing out here? Right, get back in here. Slow down the production. Yeah, Let's we got to go. make this production work. And you're not, you're not making that happen. So get on in here, boys. <laughs> okay. The most cliche thing ever. Obviously, there was going to be a last-minute song change because we, we have to put as many roadblocks as we can into this, into this premise. All right. Um, so they come out, and they do Almost Brothers is the right. name of the song. Okay. This is a nice little ditty. It is a nice little ditty. By the way, incredibly impressively tight for they just threw this together and <laughs> right? didn't yeah. actually even rehearse it as yeah. far as you can tell in the movie. They must like, have known the song or they're something. They're making it up on stage, I really think. And I mean, just happen to be completely in tune. You know, it's a Christmas movie thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, while this is going on, like, they, Mom just went up and sang her song um, in uh, is it Our World. Our World, which is real and nice. And it's beautiful and beautiful gut-wrenching song. and all those things you expect it to be. Okay? And she's got one of those song bird voices, so it's real Ooh. nice. Just, it is. It's it's fun. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you've seen this movie a bunch of times like I have, you do notice there is an interesting structuring between both those songs that are performed. Yeah. It seems eerily similar. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Though. Right, yeah. So, they're, they're oh, thinking, oh, great, we killed it, we're about to win. Yes. And then the fox again, right. this is a different fox, comes out and he's like, Oh, wait, normally we wouldn't allow a last-minute entry, but these boys traveled so far, we just have to let them. (laughs) And who is it but those dang River City boys? Those those River Bottom boys with their their River Bottom Nightmare Band, whatever it is. And so they come out, and they sound like Deep Purple, and they're freaking awesome. Like, what are you going to do? You can't argue with that. It's all crazy in 70s psychedelic and colors everywhere, and oh my goodness, it's great. There's no competing with that. Come on. Yeah, they, they... kind of deserved to win it was sweet yeah but that is a nightmare for our uh, yes, heroes it is absolutely a nightmare for our two little otters that tried so hard yep to win all right and as you figure they do win you know doing the whole darkest before the dawn right, let's prep right. for the miracle so, you know, we're we're outside the competition and, well, we don't have a washtub, we don't have tools, and what are we going to do? Yeah, like literally, our lives are over. We can no longer eat. We have made it so that our lives cannot continue as they have. And they weren't very good lives to begin with. 
And we've made even that meager existence impossible. Yep. So what happens? What is our Christmas miracle list? This is going to be your part of the show, I think, because you're well, going to be the Christmas miracle person. What else can you do in a moment like that but sing a song? <sighs> well, we should, we should probably just say... Mr. Toad owns a local <laughs> local eatery. Comes up, is like, well, you were both really good, but I think you were just missing something. Missing just a little something. And all of a sudden, Ma gets this wonderful idea to combine both songs, oh, explaining what? why they both sounded eerily familiar when you were listening to them yep. the first time. You're like, huh? Doesn't their song sound? Good? And apparently. The boy's song is just the backing vocals to mom's song. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you got a little something special. Yeah, they have whatever that thing that they were missing. Yep. And so Mr. Toad comes up and he offers them a job. At his eatery. Yep. And mom, and, and he, by the way, even mom, even in this moment, is like, I mean, is it gonna, are we going to get paid regular if we play a regular? <laughs> and he's like, like well, I'm, I'm kind of like, bitch, just take the job. I know, right? You don't have a lot of options here. Yeah. So... And they can start tonight. Yeah. What do you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Christmas Miracle is somebody walks up and hands them jobs after making a lot of horrible life decisions. Kind of, yeah. But I think that is probably at its core, maybe the Christmas Miracle. Um, one of my one of my favorite Christmas movies. It is genuinely like heartwarming. and Yeah, it's, it's a very, really charming film. Very, very well done. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Liz? I mean, yeah, it's. I think it's great. I think it's worth watching, absolutely. And uh, it's got a lot of fun points, but it, it's really a heartwarming one. It's not, you know, crazy off the wall kind of Christmas. It's it's warm, fuzzy Christmas miracle kind of Christmas. Yeah. But it's a good one. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyways folks I think we're going to call it right there I don't want to make these too long this is just something fun for me and Liz to talk about Christmas because we love Christmas yep. um, take it easy we'll talk to you next week bye